Adelaide Resources is a multi-commodity explorer in Australia, listed on the Australian Stock Exchange with the ticker code ADN. And joining me right now via Skype is Adelaide Resources Managing Director, Mr Chris Drown. Welcome, Chris. Uh, hi, Tim. It's good to be talking with you. Now, you've, got, you've been uh, with Adelaide Resources for some significant amount of time. Can you explain just the history that you've had with the company? Look, uh, Adelaide Resources uh, first floated in uh, October, I think, or no, it was uh, September 1996, uh, and I joined them not long afterwards uh, in 97 as their exploration manager. So I suppose I've been, um, uh, you know, associated with the company and with its, uh, you know, through the uh, the good times and the bad, uh, really for nearly for nearly its two decade uh, history. So now before we talk about the big news that you've got for us today, um, in that period of time that you've been running uh, and being involved with Adelaide Resources, you're quite a multi-commodity play. I mean, you've got gold, lithium and copper in several of the states or many of the states of Australia. Can you quickly go through uh, w what those assets are and where they are quickly? Yeah, certainly can, Tim. Look, our main focus is uh, gold. Uh, so, and we want the market to understand that that is, you know, really uh, where most of our efforts go. Our gold project, we have an adv a more advanced project in South Australia on the Northern Air Peninsula, and we'll talk about that one in a while. Uh, we have an, an increasing ground position in the Drummond Basin in Queensland. Um, investors will know of the Pajingo mine, which is being operated by Evolution. Pajingo was produced over... I think three and a half million ounces of very high grade gold, and that's uh, sort of in the same same rocks as, as as we're looking in there. So they're the they're the the the, the, the gold dominant uh, projects. In terms of lithium, we have uh, you know noticed the market interest in in lithium in 2016. Uh, we have acted on uh, on that interest by acquiring a portfolio of uh, of lithium properties. They include some hard rock plays in the Northern Territory and in WA. And for something a little different, we're also probably one of the leading uh, groups looking at the potential for lithium brines in under South Australian salt lakes. And that's a and result so of the that's, uh, that's a result of the government study as well. So you've got very good data yeah, to go and, on there. Yeah, yeah, Geoscience Australia, which is the federal. Uh, I guess you know the, the the federal geological body and their task with, with you know establishing you know uh, and reviewing the nation's prospectivity for a range of minerals, uh, have had a have had a study on on South Australian or on Australian salt lakes, uh, looking for things like borate and uh, and potash and also lithium potential, and we've acted on on some of the work that they've done by. Uh, pegging uh, some of these lakes where there's likely to be some or there may be some lithium potential have to be clear that we we don't know for certain whether or not there will be but that with what little data that that there is these uh, do show some potential and it's a fairly low cost exercise for us to go and have a look and so that's something that we're prepared to do uh, for our shareholders uh, because we believe that uh, if we were lucky enough to have some uh, some good elevated levels of lithium in the brines, and it could be the start of a, a whole new industry for Australia. And it'd be nice to be at the forefront of that. Yeah. Um, and then, look, lastly, uh, sorry, Tim. Lastly, we've got some copper projects. Uh, uh, one on the um, uh, the Northern York Peninsula of South Australia. That's that's an area that was, you know, historically copper was mined in a, in a district which was called the Copper Triangle, and we have a tenement around that. And we've made a, actually a number of discoveries there. Uh, in, in recent years, but copper's not quite the flavour of the month that gold and lithium are, and, and we, you know, we're just not sensing as much investor interest for copper. So, uh, you know, but it's a good project that will come again, uh, as is our rover project up near Tennant Creek in... Uh, in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you've, uh, what's really come to the front now and what the company's focusing on is the, primarily the Barnes deposit and the surrounding deposits. Now, as I understand, you discovered the Barnes deposit, you know, some time ago when the gold price was down. Now the economics of that whole situation have changed. Can you just explain that? Yeah, look, we found, uh, we found Barnes in 2000 
Uh, and if uh, investors will probably remember that in 2000, the price of gold wasn't too, wasn't too flash. Uh, at the time, it was trading in a range in Aussie dollar terms of between about 450 and maybe 600 uh, Aussie dollars per ounce. And we did quite a bit of work at Barnes. We did a lot of lot of drilling and we found um, quite a lot of mineralisation. But at those sort of gold prices, we really couldn't make it uh, look like it would go the distance. Now, you know, fast forward to 216, uh, gold price now were close to $1,800 uh, Australian per ounce, and it looks like a very, very different story. So we did some work there last year. We, we, we released some further uh, promising uh, drill results. But really what we've done is, you know, predominantly using this historic data, we've gone back and we are in the process of estimating a, a maiden, uh, you know, sort of uh, mineral resource that we can announce that is compliant with uh, JORC 2012. And that is actually fairly imminent, the release of that of, of that. Uh, of that maiden resource. So it's going to be quite a milestone, certainly for the company, but also for that project. Um, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, sort of would be described as, uh, you know, a very solid start to what we might be able to achieve up there with, uh, with further work. One of the interesting things about Barnes, apart from some of those intersections, I saw the drill chart and uh, you've got intersections over 20 grams, up to about 27 grams over, over a few metres. But you've also got other gold deposits in that area. So you can achieve an even greater economy of scale. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, look, Barnes itself is open to the south and down dip. Uh, so that single deposit has a potential to grow. Uh, but additionally, you know, our previous work has also discovered five other gold prospects within, you know, within close vicinity to Barnes. Uh, and, you know, these, these are these are all uh, targets that have delivered, you know, sort of potentially economic grade gold intersections in the past. Probably the one that, we, you know, is most advanced is one that we call Baggy Green, which attests to my love of, uh, of, of cricket. Um, and uh, we found that uh, at some, uh, I think it was about 2004, so after we found Barnes, it was actually done under a joint venture with Newmont, and Newmont had a, a very large, you know, sort of corporate target in mind, and we drilled it at a very coarse pattern. In fact, with the, the line spacing was 200 metres, which is... Significantly wide. But what that did do is it delineated a, uh, a well-behaved... Uh, you know, gold mineralised structure in the in the ground, and we can go back to that deposit, uh, Baggy Green, do some infill drilling that's relatively shallow, and confidently add to what will be this maiden resource position uh, that comes out soon from Barnes. So, yeah, we're very very confident that Barnes is just a start, and that we can grow the uh, you know the resource position from there. Um, you have to be a little careful what we said. We got slapped over the wrist, wrist by uh, ASIC for uh, talking uh, about economic scoping studies and things before uh, the the, uh, the codes allowed. But suffice to say that our decisions uh, that we're making in terms of investing in uh, doing further work at Barnes are based on our economic assessment of these uh, of, of, of Barnes itself plus these surrounding uh, deposits and you know we're very keen to move these forward so you can you know what I'm saying when I, when I say that. I, I understand Chris that you've had a lot of experience in that entire region um, going decades it's not like you just come across you know an exciting prospect to drill you're very familiar with these deposits and uh, although we can't re be really specific about what you've got, you are in the process of a maiden resource announcement very shortly for that deposit. Yep, that's correct. So look, this is really only, you know, at most weeks away. Uh, in fact, it's probably, uh, it's probably going to be closer than that. Um, and as I said, I think that the market should see it as a very, very promising and solid start to what we might be able to build here. Now, along with the, the Barnes project, uh, the Barnes deposit in South Australia, you also have a gold deposit in Queensland that you're going to bring on after this current activity. Can you explain the, the Drummond's prospect? The, the Drummond Basin is a, a basin in Queensland 
It, it includes uh, or hosts deposits like Pajingo, which is a you know fabulous uh, gold mine, very high grade, has produced something like three and a half million ounces over its uh, its uh, time in production. We've got a, a, a growing land position in the Drummond. We have identified, you know, confirmed epithermal gold bearing systems on our ground, and we're actually pretty excited about testing some of these uh, later in this year as well. So. Uh, you know, there's a, a prospect which we, we really only worked up late last year. We call it Bunyip, and it's uh, it's disposes about 2,000 metres of continuous uh, outcropping quartz veins at the surface. We've got rock chip samples up to 19.6 grams per tonne uh, gold from uh, from these these quartz veins. Uh, and, you know, we're very, very interested to get a drill rig into that uh, some, st- some stage uh, as well in 216, along you know, we'll be doing that work as well as the uh, the work on the Air Peninsula at Barnes and uh, and um, you know uh, I think you know announcement to the market of a, of a promising result from from a, a drum and bass and exploration uh, target will you know we could really see the company re-rated. So we're very very keen to uh, to do that. We've got dr- uh, a bunch plus another probably three other targets that we want to test as well. And so, you know, goal focus, um, uh, but earlier stage things, but I think probably have the potential to really put a rocket under the share price. So uh, that's that's the other part of the goal story. Well, that is exciting news. Chris Drown, Managing Director for Adelaide Resources. Uh, for investors watching, ASX ADN, that's Alpha Delta November. Thank you very much for joining us, Chris. It's my pleasure, Tim. Cheerio.